This is a video over the Chapter 14 AP review questions for our Chapter 14 exam. So these are actually taken just from previous years, very recent years. Uh, expect them to be a little difficult. And uh, here we go. The pure substance X decomposes according to the equation above. It's a very general equation, X decomposes, so we have only one reactant. And which of the following graphs indicates that the rate of decomposition is second order? Now, whenever you graph an experiment, a rate experiment, you will get a graph depending on what you do with the concentration. You can either graph the concentration itself versus time. It'll always be time on the x-axis. But you could do the natural log of x, and you can do the inverse of x. Those three graphs are possible. Now, there are no natural log graphs here. They actually just show you regular x and 1 over x. Recall that if you get a straight line with just the concentration, you get zero order. In fact, um, you see that here. <coughs> Notice uh, x right here versus time gives you a straight line. Now we actually get two possibilities here, an, a positive slope or a negative slope. Turns out this is actually the incorrect uh, graph because as time goes on, the concentration should decrease. So a correct graph would be something like this if it was zero order. This would be zero order. And this is a little bit more detail about what the graphs look like. This is, again, wrong because as a reaction proceeds, you're always using up reactants, which means as we go on, you'll have less and less and less reactants. So the slope should be going down. Most of the graphs should actually have a downward slope. This doesn't even make any sense. Now, <clears throat> as you see, here we have 1 over x and 1 over x, so they don't even show an ln natural log, so it can't be uh, uh, first order. So we're looking for a second order reaction to be one of these because we've got 1 over x. The question is, is this going to be a positive slope or a negative slope? Now both, the, whenever you do graph the ln, you also should get a negative slope. You should get a negative slope on the first order. You should get a negative slope on the uh, sec, uh, I'm sorry, zero order on the first order. Both of these should be negative slope. However, on the second order, you'll get a positive slope, and that is the difference. The reason being is because you're graphing 1 over x. So say when you were doing regular x, every time you keep going, the concentration gets lower and lower and lower. Well, right here what you're doing, you're inverting that. You're doing 1 over that. So if, for example, your concentration went from you know, 5 to 3 to 1 to 0.3, you see it's getting lower and lower and lower. But if you invert all these numbers, if you do 1 over 5, then all of a sudden 5 becomes a small number and you'll start increasing. In other words, what I'm saying is this is actually the correct answer. Uh, your 1 over x graph, even though it will be a straight line for second order, it will not be a negative slope. It will be a positive slope. So this is actually our second order reaction. So D is the correct answer. A little more uh, details about graphing rate loss. Let's try number 2. Now number 2 gives you a uh, a table like we've done in our lab and the table summarizes three possible experiments uh, with varying concentration of x and y and then you've got the initial rate of formation so very similar to what you've seen before here it says in order to determine the order uh, of the reaction represented above you'll notice it's x plus 2y give you x y2 a very generic uh, reaction different initial values of x and y were measured and that's what we find in the table the results of the experiments are shown in the table Okay, in trial two, which is this one here, which of the two reactants would be consumed more rapidly and why? So they're asking for us, uh, us for whether X or Y would be consumed more rapidly, meaning uh, would disappear more quickly. Now we could try to determine uh, how the concentration affects the rate, and we could try, try to draw a rate law. Now remember, rate law always looks like this. Rate equals a constant times your reactants to a certain power. Now, the power will come from the uh, rate experiment itself, not from the equation. And this is important uh, because the equation coefficients could be 2 and 1, but the rate could be 1 and 2, or 1 and 1, or 1 and 0. So if you take a look here, what we've got is we'll take a look at uh, how x affects the rate by checking uh, trials 1 and 2. From 1 and 2, we're doubling in concentration in the same span the rate goes up from 8 to 32. This is 8, negative 3. This is a 3, 2, and negative 2, so 8 to 32, which is times 4. 
which means x is actually second order. If we do the same thing to y, let's consider uh, experiment 2 and 3 because that's where x stays constant. We double here in the same span from 3.2 to 6.4 with the same power, so we also double. So y indeed is first order. What you'll see right away is that the coefficients do not match, and that's very common. Uh, the rate law itself may not be dependent on the, concentra uh, on the uh, coefficients. So we know x is second order, y is first order. <coughs> the answers, however, let's go through the answers. Uh, let me show you, so first of all, c is out, it says y because the reaction is second order with respect to y. It's actually first order with respect to y. So this one's out for good. Uh, B says X because the reaction is second order with respect to X. That is correct. The reaction is second order with respect to X. So it's possible that uh, it could be B. Let's see. There are also some other, because this is a true statement. Now, these are difficult because not only is it a true statement, but does it explain what they're asking us? A says uh, X because it has a higher molar concentration. Notice X does have a higher molar concentration than Y. So that's also correct. Uh, but does it explain the, the trend? Uh, D says why? Because the rate of disappearance will be double that of x. Now the rate of disappearance is double that of x based on stoichiometry. This is correct. Whatever the rate of disappearance of x is, y is double. So this is also true. This is uh, quite a uh, doozy. Which one of those three is correct? If you think about it, the rate of disappearance uh, or how fast it's consumed if you consider which is consumed faster, uh, in other words, which goes away faster, x or y, the stoichiometry directly tells us that y is twice as fast as x. So if we're losing one mole per minute or per second for x, we're going to be using two moles per second for y. So if we're going twice as fast for y, we are going to lose y faster, no matter how much we begin with. If we begin with more of x, for every x that disappears, y still disappears two times faster. So this one's out. It doesn't matter that x has a higher concentration. y will disappear faster anyway. And um, this one's out. Yes, x is second order, but second order refers to how x affects the overall rate. It doesn't, it's not how x affects y. This is actually the one that explains how X and Y are related, and that's why D is the correct answer. This is a tough one uh, and po possibly confusing, so uh, take a minute and think through it for yourself. Make sure you're convinced that D is the correct answer. Take a look at number three. We have ourselves a uh, sample of N2O5 <coughs> placed in an vacuum container. These are all gases, notice, gas, gas, gas. And the reaction represented above occurs, the value of the pressure of uh, N2O5, which is our reactant, is measured uh, during the re reaction. <clears throat> so you'll notice that as time goes on, we've measured the pressure change in our initial reactant. Now, they've also calculated the natural log and the one over that, the inverse. So this is very similar to question one. And uh, they're asking us, which of the following de uh, describes the reaction? The first one says, A, the de decomposition of N2O5 uh, is zero order. We have first order. We have second order. We have the overall reaction is third order. Now, the re reaction can't be a third order, uh, you could say, because we don't have, it's just a decomposition. In order for it to be third order, we have to have likely three reacting particles somehow, because we only have one reacting particle. Uh, most likely, it won't be that one. So we can probably think about crossing that one in a minute. But <clears throat> we're actually able to tell what the uh, order is just directly from the graphs. If you were to graph these, these would either give you a straight line here, a straight line here, or a straight line here. And if it was here, we said 0, 1, or 2. So let's see which one gives you a straight line. Now, you can graph these, but you don't have time uh, in a quick multiple choice question like this. So what we would have to do is consider, all right, what's the decrease here. Here we're decreasing by 75. Here uh, then we're decreasing by less than 75, whatever that is, 37. And here we're decreasing by 19. You'll notice that this is not a constant number, so it will probably will not be zero order. <coughs> With natural log, we see that we decrease by 0.7 here, we decrease by 0.7 again here, and we decrease by 0.7 here. Uh -huh. 
we see that we can decrease by a constant rate, which means this graph right here will actually give us a constant rate, a constant decrease. Because um, this incidentally is constant, 100, 100, 100. So we should get a constant decrease in the rate. So it is actually the LN gives us the a straight line, which means LN giving a straight line is a first order reaction. So B is the correct answer. Again, um, everything else doesn't make sense uh, because we only have one reactant species. You can't really have a second order reaction if you have only one reacting species, if it's a decomposition. All decompositions are actually going to be li most likely than not first order reactions. Good. And incidentally, if you try this, this also decreases by different amounts. So here you have, what, 14, and here you have 26 or something, so <clears throat> different numbers. Good. How about number four and five? These should be a little shorter as we wrap up. Four says the reaction represented above occurs in a single step, and uh, that involves the collision of between a particle of NO and a particle of NO3. So you do see two different particles. A scientist correctly calculates the rate of collision. Now this is collision. Remember, in order for a reaction to happen, particles must collide. And it says that uh, they have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. The observed reaction rate is only a small fraction of the calculated collision rate. So we know they collide much faster than the actual reaction rate. We're asking what explains that. A says the energy of collisions between two reacting particles is frequency absorbed by a third particle. We don't really see a third particle. That one can't be true because there's only two particles in the reaction. That's probably incorrect. B says the two reactant particles must collide with a particular orientation, and this is correct. Not only should the particles collide with enough energy, they have to collide with the right orientation, otherwise they will not bond with each other. B is actually the correct answer. C says the activation energy for reaction is dependent on the concentration. That's actually not true. Um, the co the uh, activation energy dependent on how much energy they must collide with. Activation energy for reaction is dependent on the temperature. This is also not true. Uh, temperature doesn't raise or lower the activation or energy. It just gives the particles more energy to overcome the activation barrier. Remember, the only thing that lowers the activation energy is a catalyst. So this would be a catalyst that would lower the activation energy. Good. Think through that one. And number five, which we may have seen already, uh, says a kinetics experiment is set up to collect the gas that is generated with a small amount of chalk, consisting primarily of calcium carbonate is added to a solution of anoic acid. The rate of the reaction is measured and by it checking the volume of gas generated as a function of time. Which of the following experimental conditions is most likely to increase the rate of gas production? So this is what we talked about at the very beginning. And if you want to increase the rate, you can either increase the concentration, increase the temperature, or add a catalyst. So here it says, A says the decrease in the volume of ethanoic acid, that would decrease the amount we have in fact, actually, it would not decrease the concentration. The decrease in the volume actually won't do anything to the concentration. If you have a 5 molar solution, and if you're just using less of it, it's still 5 molar. So that actually doesn't do anything. B says decrease in the concentration of ethanoic acid. Aha, uh -huh. decrease in concentration will actually decrease the rate. We need to increase the rate of the reaction. So that one's out. C says decrease in the temperature at which the experiment. Temperature will always increase the rate. So uh, if you decrease the temp, it'll decrease the rate. In other words, that one's out. D says decreasing the particle size of calcium carbonate. Yes. So calcium carbonate is a solid. So if you think about it, when you go from a solid to a smaller particle size by crushing the substance, you effectively increase the concentration. Because remember, in order for reaction to occur, collisions between the reactant particles must happen. Here, you can only collide on the outside but if you break it up, now the collisions can come from the inside. You increase the number of collisions possible, and that's why D will increase the rate of the reaction. All right, hopefully uh, those made sense. Go ahead and go through them. Think through them yourselves. You may find a few of these on our actual tests. And that concludes our review lesson.